like to call this meeting of the regular meeting of the Board of Education to order. If you would all please rise for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance and posting of colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, vote. Right, faith. Forward, heart. Tonight's national anthem was performed by Eaton Elementary School Chorus, uh, Principal Heather Byers. Ms. Byers, if you're in the audience, please stand. And they are under the direction of instructor Carly Kanzler. Uh, in just a moment, we'll turn the mic over to you so that you can introduce your students or that they can introduce themselves. Also would invite the um, cadets um, from New Hanover High School Air Force Junior ROTC to the front of the room. Uh, for the posting of the colors that they uh, provided for us tonight. And Principal Rob Morgan uh, from New Hanover High School, if you're here, please stand. And we do have Instructor Master Sergeant Jose Denegene with us tonight. And they're also under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Mark Hafer. And we'll turn this over so that we can have introductions. And we'll start on the far end with our, um, our core students, if that's okay. So I'm Carly Kanzler. I'm the music teacher at Eaton. I'm a 
America's Canaan fifth grade Eaton Elementary School. I'm Mary Jeffrey Sniffer, Eaton Elementary School fifth grade. I'm Joanne Bennett, Eaton Elementary fifth grade. Lauren Steinhauer, fifth grade Eaton Elementary. Riley Wertman, fifth grade Eaton Elementary. Aiden Fantzler, fifth grade elementary. Hi, I'm S hi, I'm Sather Selby, and I am a fifth grader at Eaton Elementary School. Mia Guanda at Eaton Elementary School in fifth grade. Nicholas Camilleri, fifth grade at Eaton Elementary School. Mike Powell, fifth grade at Eaton Elementary School. I'm a uh, Cadet Thompson, New Hanover High School. I'm a junior. Cadet Hunter, I'm. New Hanover High School, I'm a junior. I'm Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Dewan Watkins Brown. I'm a rising junior, a rising senior, my bad. <laughs> I'm Cadet Isabella James. I am a sophomore at Hanover High School. Mass Sergeant Jose Denegene, uh, JOTC instructor, New Hanover High School. And one more big round of applause, yes. Thank you. Um, Reverend Lewis, would you like to come up? Uh, I want to say uh, thank you to, to you for saying the invocation today. Would you like to come up and just say a few words about your, your church? At First Presbyterian Church, we're uh, pleased to be a part of this incredible community and uh, especially to support public education. And so it's an honor and a privilege to be here and represent uh, our church family. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number two, approval of the agenda. There are two additions under committee reports. There will be a report on policy and a report on redistricting. Any other additions or deletions hearing none i'd like to ask for approval of the agenda move to approve second there's uh all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye any opposed it is approved item number three approval of the minutes um is it okay if we do all these together yes all right is there a motion to approve items a b and c move to approve all minutes is there a second? Second. Who was second. the second? Okay. Mr. Billier. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? They are approved. Item number number four, recognition of achievement. Community partnership. Item A, New Hanover County Council of PTAs. Good evening. Tonight we begin our recognitions by highlighting our community partnerships with the New Hanover County Council of PTAs. As you know, our parent-teacher organizations are such, a strong, are such strong supporters of our schools. Here tonight we have Ms. Ber Bernice Johnson, president of the New Hanover County PTA, to tell us more about how the PTA Council supports our schools, schools through volunteers, grants, and programs within the district. Good evening, my name again is Bernice Sanders Johnson. I am the president of the New Hanover County Council of PTAs and a member of the North Carolina PTA Board of Directors. I'm excited, I'm excited to be here this evening to give you an overview of the council and some of the great things we're doing with New Hanover County PTAs. PTA is the nation's oldest and largest child advocacy organization. PTA stretched from small towns to large cities, from state legislators to na nation's capitals. A council is an organized group of three or more P local PTA units affiliated with North Carolina PTA for the purpose of promoting conferences, communications, leadership development, and coordination of efforts of the local PTAs. The PTA's council's main purpose is to promote the welfare of children and youth. This year's executive board consists of myself, Bernice Johnson, and I represent Mary C. Williams Elementary, Stephanie Crabill, who I believe is here. She's the vice president, represents D.C. Virgo. Krista Bronistas represents the International School of Gregory, and she'll be serving as our secretary this year. 
and Treasurer Carolyn Morgan Cristo representing Holly Tree Elementary. I'm proud to say out of the 41 elementary, middle, and high schools in New Hanover County, 32 are PTA schools and members of the council. One of the most important functions of the council is to help charter new PTA units. We do this with guidance and support of startup grants. Last year, we were able to support CTEC in starting a PTA. We're currently working with Rachel Freeman Elementary School to charter their PTA this year, and we hope to bring Porter's Neck Elementary on board next year. <coughs> Here's a listing of our 32 PTA units. As part of the council board of directors, the council has a principal representative and an EC liaison on the council board. New Hanover County Council is, regarded, is highly regarded by the North Carolina PTA organization. We are often called on to help PTAs in surrounding counties get up and running or to help with internal issues. The council has representation of several New Hanover County school committees, including the school Health Advisory Board, the Crisis Management Team, the Board of Education Title IX Com Committee, the Calendar Committee, and we also hope to be a part of the Board of Education Community Involvement Committee. One of the major events for the Council is the annual Volunteer Awards Banquet. We host this banquet to recognize the many facets of volunteerism at schools. These volunteers are nominated by principals and PTA leaders. Another function of the council is to help find grants for local units. Last year, we were able to help facilitate the national PTA grant, which awarded $500 to the following PTAs. Ashley High School, College Park Elementary School, E.A. Laney High School, International School of Gregory, Isaac Berry Early College, Mary C. Williams Elementary School, Pine Valley Elementary School, and Trask Middle School. We also, with the support of the North Carolina PTA, were able to assist schools with the Hurricane Relief Grant. This grant provided financial assistance to local PTA units and other school communities in New Hanover County following the Hurricane Florence in two, September 2018. The following schools received $1,000 grants. Bradley Creek Elementary, E.A. Laney High School, Forest Hills Global <coughs> Elementary School, Isaac Bear Early College, Pine Valley Elementary School, Wilmington Early College, and Wrightsville Beach Elementary School. I just received word this weekend while attending the North Carolina board retreat that there are additional funds for hurricane relief and I'll be getting that message out to schools later on this month. One of our signature programs is Reflection. Reflections encourages students to explore the arts and express themselves by giving a positive recognition for their artistic efforts. Since it was founded, millions of students have benefited from this program. Last year marked the 50th anniversary of the Reflections program. The theme was Heroes Around Me. The annual Reflections Gala was held at the beautiful Mini Arts Performing Arts Center on January 19, 2019. New Hanover County winners went on to compete at the state level, and I'm happy to say that New Hanover County had 10 state level winners. We also, which I'm very proud of, had a national winner, Ellen, Ella Grogan of Ogden Elementary School. The 2019-2020 Reflections theme will be Look Within. The council is working to continue to be New Hanover County Schools' number one community partner. We recognize that good communication is crucial to our partnership, but we would like you to know it's important to know that New Hanover, excuse me, that PTAs exist at the state, regional, and local levels. Depending on your project, you may want to work with a different level, different individuals. You should know your key PTA leaders. Each PTA has a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Remember that PTA members are volunteers. However, it's important to note that North Carolina PTA has paid staff on the state level. And this is very rare, but our, local, our state level does have paid staff. 
You should remember to brainstorm with your target PTA to understand the strengths and weaknesses. Each PTA is different and can contribute different things to your project. So thank you for allowing me to share a little bit about New Hanover County Council of PTAs. Are there any questions? If not, thank you and have a wonderful school year. Thank you again, Ms. Johnson, for sharing all that information. Recently, we began school videos series as a request of the board. This month, we are pleased to present Principal Sharon Desharn with a video about Laney High School and the, ho the home of the Buccaneers.
I jotted down just a few notes about our specialty program, STEM, uh, just for some bragging points. Um, this past year, we had 310 students participating in STEM. Um, with our 10th through 12th grade, um, we calculated their GPA before um, the school year was over with. Their average was 3.94. Um, also, this past year's graduates of the 40 that completed the survey, um, some of them are moving on, well, all of them are moving on to some prestigious universities to include Brigham Young, NC State, tons going to NC State, UNC, Wake Forest, ECU, Meredith, Ohio State, Naval Academy. And, and of those that did complete it, um, 40 of those that completed it, over a million dollars offered in scholarship and financial um, aid. Uh, we have two cohorts in our STEM program, engineering and biomed. Um, we have several virtual classes that run through the North Carolina School of Science and Math to include honors biotech and genetics, honors forensic, honors computational thinking and coding um, on campus. Obviously, our project Lead the Way um, runs through our CTE program, honors aerospace engineering, introduction to engineering design, principles of engineering, engineering design and development. These classes use specialized commercial business related programs um, that are 3D. Um, the skills that these students um, achieve through this particular part of our STEM, statistical analysis, mathematical modeling, team building and collaboration, automation, mecha mechanisms, research based programming, robotics, if you saw the little spear, um, health science levels one and two, biomed tech, coming out of our science department to support those students on that part of the cohort, honors anatomy, AP bio, um, honors bio two, um, and students can come out of Laney um, testing to get their CNA certification. Um, and in the last few years, 100% have achieved that certification. So um, any questions about Laney or our STEM program? Pretty impressive. Yeah. I beg your pardon? It's impressive. Yes, it's an impressive group of folks. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah. It's fantastic. Thank right. you for the good work you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that overview. Give it a big hand. And thank you, Ms. Johnson, and to the, the uh, Council of PTAs for coming out tonight and, and for all the wonderful work that you do at all our schools. All right, uh, item number five, call to the audience. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Um, uh, however, time does not permit dialogue between the board and the community. While the board welcomes residents to share their views, the chairperson retains the right to limit discussions on a particular topic when such comments become slanderous or personal in nature. Uh, the first person to sign up is Donna uh, Gargett. Gargett? I apologize if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. You can come on up to the mic. Good evening. Um, yes, my name is Donna Gargett, and I'm here today to talk to you about literacy. I believe it's time we form partnerships to close the reading gap in our school system. I started this quest when I was told by a public school um, that they don't serve for dyslexia. Since that day, I vowed to find solutions to help close the reading gap in our school system. I've chipped away with it by creating a nonprofit and assist as a state leader for decoding dyslexia. I've dedicated much of my time because both my daughters struggle with dyslexia, and they're not alone. 15 to 20 percent of our student population here in New Hanover County also struggle with dyslexia. I know these struggles um, all too well, as I too am dyslexic. I was not identified until I was 22 years old. With controversy over our state screening tools, I hope you see just how important it is to catch reading failure. 
Most of you have probably heard of dyslexia, but you may have be misinformed. Dyslexia is a language-based disorder. According to the International Dyslexic Association, dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin. It is characterized by difficulties with accuracy and or fluency word recognition by poor spelling and decoding abilities. These difficulties typically result in a deficiency in phonological components of language that is often unexpected in relationship to other cognitive abilities. But putting dyslexia aside for a moment, if we look at the science of reading, we can focus on best practices for all students, inclusion. We need professional development to include structured literacy, phonemic awareness, explicit instruction that is multi-sensory. I have seen this community come together in the face of tragedy, and I'm here to point out another tragedy that we are facing, and that's illiteracy, and it's preventable with your help. Today is a call of action as I'm helping to form a reading coalition for North Carolina. Difficulties with literacy should not just be addressed in the EC department. And I urge you to educate all teachers, administration, and parents. I am hopeful in this board because of the focus on better communication. I will never forget the day I handed a simple warning sheet to a parent of a sixth grader. With tears in his eyes, he asked, where was this information five years ago? Dyslexia can be diagnosed as early as five and a half, and it could also be remediated. I hope that Onslow County will consider using October's Dyslexic Awareness Month as a great opportunity to bridge this gap yeah. and to start educating the public about reading failure. Thank you. Lisa Anderson. Hi, my name is Lisa Schaefer Anderson. I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. I attended Pine Valley Elementary, Roland Grice Middle, Hoggard High School, the North Carolina School of Science and Math, and then NC State University, and also attended Oxford University um, in England. I'm here today because I personally believe it's very important that our children be able to attend schools that are within walking and biking distance. For instance, my parents here in the audience biked my sister and I to Pine Valley Elementary School kids as um, students. We were very excited in the 80s, back in the 80s, when the semi-circle sidewalk on Robert e. Lee, Robert e. Lee Drive was connected. So now it is a full two and a half mile sidewalk that our predecessors, people before us, invested uh, city funds in so that all of us who live in the Pine Valley neighborhood can actually walk and bike to school. It's excellent. It reduces obesity, it improves community connections, and we don't have to pay any extra money to bike. <laughs> we're not paying for gas, we're not paying for anything extra. So we're super excited that we can bike to school. I myself have two boys now, and we have been biking and walking to school for four years. With the current potential redistricting map, I saw that the Pine Valley Elementary School residents who have children in the neighborhood would no longer attend by Pine Valley Elementary School, which I found, um, I'm speechless. So I'd like to ask the audience, for everybody who is in favor of Pine Valley Elementary School students who actually live in the neighborhood and can connect to the full two and a half mile sidewalk to be able to safely bike or walk to school and walk home from school, to please rise and raise their hand. Thank you. I also want to mention that if you have not been physically inside the neighborhood, which is where I live, I grew up there and I also live there with my children now, um, you might not know that there's actually an entire sidewalk that connects to other side, uh, areas in the other roads in the school. And so it is a great location for us to be able to physically bike and walk to school. So as you consider the schools, I respectfully request that you would allow the Pine Valley Elementary School residents and children of that neighborhood to continue to look, go to Pine Valley Elementary School as they have for the past 40 years, I'm 40, so for the past 40 years, I think it's wonderful that you all and our city have built so many uh, wonderful walkways, the city trail, the sidewalks, I'm so thankful 
for the people that went before us to make it possible for us to bike and walk to school and to keep our community connected together and involved as parents. The people that live on Pine Valley Drive would really love to go to Pine Valley Elementary School. I also believe that the middle school and the high schools should be within a close level of proximity as well. Um, I can't think of anything more valuable to me in my educating my children, which is my ultimate responsibility, than to be able to partner with their teachers, their principals, their neighbors, their siblings, and to be able to all be so involved that we can walk and bike to school every day. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Oh, y'all can't talk. Thank you. Britt Thompson. Like Lisa, I believe that families that live in Pine Valley should attend Pine Valley Elementary. The proposed maps take Pine Valley families away from our neighborhood schools. Students that live less than one quarter mile from Pine Valley are slated to attend a different school three miles away. These are students who have a safe sidewalk on which they walk and bike to school with their neighbors. These are families who hear the playground from their front yards. Under the new maps, Robert E. Lee, our community circle, is split in half. Students who live directly across the street from each other would go to different schools. Even students who live on Pine Valley Drive would not attend Pine Valley Elementary. What kind of sense does this make? Pine Valley Elementary is a high achieving Title I school. We have met or exceeded academic growth over the past five years. We have a consistently high performance grade, low staff turnover rates, and a high number of National Board certified teachers. We have an extremely diverse student population and an amazing staff that works diligently to enable success for all students. Just this past school year, Pine Valley students earned first place in Science Olympiad, fourth place in Battle of the Books, and gave an energizing and inspiring Best Foot Forward performance. We are truly proud of our school, our students, and our staff, and we work hard for all the positive results we've earned. Why would you break up such a successful school? At Pine Valley Elementary, it's easy to be an involved parent because the school is located within our neighborhood. Families frequently stop by for lunch with their children. Parent conferences can be conveniently scheduled, and our volunteer logs are filled with hours that parents are able to dedicate to our students due to the close proximity to their homes. Moving our children out of our neighborhood will drastically reduce the amount of time that parents are able to give to our school. Why would you choose to reduce parent involvement? Finally, the businesses and churches in Pine Valley are huge contributors to our success. Just this summer alone, these groups have contributed $20,000 to purchase school supplies for our entire student population. They invest in our school because they are simultaneously investing in their own patrons, congregations, and our neighborhood as a whole. Dividing our families into different schools puts these support systems at risk. Organizations will be less likely to donate because they are impacting fewer neighborhood families. Why would you choose to reduce community support in a neighborhood school? Members of the board, I implore you, keep Pine Valley families at Pine Valley Elementary. Our school is located within our neighborhood. We are successful, we have ample community support. We are everything a new Hanover County school should be. It is up to you to make sure we continue as such. Tori Kaufman. Good evening. I, like Lisa and Britt, um, both in my neighborhood, uh, would like to take this opportunity to address the redistricting study I was made aware of on July 10th, 2019. I'm strongly opposed to Pine Valley neighborhood being divided in any way and implore you to keep the Pine Valley neighborhood di districted to Pine Valley Elementary School, Roland Grice Middle School, and Hoggard High School. Please consider looking outside of the neighborhood or a sensible mileage range when trying to fill other schools. I would invite each of you to come walk the neighborhood um, as Robert E. Lee Drive directly leads all streets in Pine Valley neighborhood to Pine Valley Elementary School. Common sense would dictate that all children have the opportunity to attend this school. 
I am a mother of a four-year-old and a rising third grader at Pine Valley Elementary School. I grew up in this neighborhood and I still attended Pine Valley, Roland Grice, and Hoggard. We can and do now walk, bike, and scooter regularly to and from Pine Valley Elementary School on sidewalks the entire way in just a few minutes. I appreciate the community of families nearby who we have developed relationships with inside and outside of school that are able to do the same. The connectivity in our neighborhood allows for safe, community building, cost effective, healthy, and energy efficient transportation. Many people move to this neighborhood for these schools, us included. My four-year-old and I bike to school to eat lunch with my rising third grader and her classmates, <coughs> and I've been involved in volunteering at the school these past three years. Neighborhood schools promote involvement in after-school activities, as well as the involvement with parents in the schools. I've lived that out myself, and I appreciate the neighbors that I know um, that do the same. Roland Grice and Hoggard, I feel also um, are impacted by these decisions or could be in the future, and I want to point out um, that I frequently watch um, children in our neighborhood able to participate in after-school activities because of the close proximity to their house. I believe it's our responsibility as a school board, as parents, and as a community to be wise stewards of the money available for New Hanover County Schools. There would be great costs financially and environmentally in busing Pine Valley neighborhood students alone great distances beyond these schools. I too, like Britt, want to point out the amount of support that I've seen um, with the neighboring businesses and churches supporting programs at our schools. To promote efficient transportation, parent community involvement, extracurricular activities, wise money management, and neighborhood relationships, please keep all of Pine Valley neighborhood districted to Pine Valley Elementary School, Roland Grice Middle School, and Hoggard High School. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Keisha Michelle Johnson. Greetings. I am Takesha Michelle of Education Inside Out, and I am the founder and executive director of Education Inside Out with more than 20 years in education. Education Inside Out is a network of parent advocates working to bridge the gap between home and school. We do this by preparing and empowering parents and teachers to properly and effectively impact the lives of children. And as a result of what we do, parents and teachers build better relationships, establish consistency, and maintain control in their homes and in their classrooms. Now you may be wondering how we do this. I have developed a training that trains parent advocates based on years of best practices as well as additional research gathered from sources such as the Annie Casey Foundation and the Center for Children and Family Health. These parent advocates support families during school meetings, whether behavioral or academic. Education Inside Out parents, parent advocates also set up appointments to meet families in their homes behind the doors that separate them from the outside world to assist them with putting structures in place to empower the parents to do the necessary work to increase the possibility of success for their children who must live and function in the outside world. Note, we are not mental health providers. Therefore, we are available to all families with kindergarten through 12th grade children. But rest assured, we do have a collaborative of therapists, counselors, crisis interventionists, and crisis interventionists that we refer to as needed. Our purpose, purpose here this evening is to make sure that you are aware of our existence here in the city, to inform you that we have been working with New Hanover County school families for the past two years, and to be recognized by New Hanover County Schools as an organization that is approved to be invited in by school personnel and parents. I am Takesha Michelle of Education Inside Out, and I thank you very much. Dante Murphy.
in 2015, Principal De Deborah Greenwood was forced to resign from New the New Hanover County school system because of an enrollment program that purposely excluded African American kindergarten students. Top administrators reported that she was in charge of that program. In 2016, four administrators from this school system wrote glowing recommendations for her to obtain work in Rock Hill, South Carolina. At or around mid-April of this year, the ugly truth of this discriminatory enrollment program was uncovered when Dr. Markley wrote an op-ed that the leaky faucet was fixed and we should move on. What the public did not know at the time, Deborah Greenwood had also sent Dr. Tim Markley an email in April stating that she had been thrown under the bus for the second time. And that superintendent and board, to be honest about what happened in 2015 and 16. This school board does not have to hire a firm to figure out what happened in that particular case. In fact, that's like parents having to hire an off-duty police officer to tell their children not to run through the house. In fact, Legal counsel over the past eight months may suggest that an in-house attorney is no longer needed. There are four things I want you to consider. One, at least four of you should act in ways you were elected to act in what you campaigned on. Number two, you should accept the notion that remedy does not happen without accountability. Number four, uh, three, you need to demand that Superintendent of the Year, Dr. Tim Markley, stop contacting people's employer as a means of intimidation because nobody is afraid of him. Lastly, tell your lawyers to draw up a plan to compensate the sexual abuse victims of Teacher of the Year Mike Kelly so that you can end this nightmare that's been created in your system. Bridget Norris? Bridget Norris? Good evening. My name is Bridget Norris. I, am, I was previously a teacher for the Harnett County School System, and now I have two students in the new Hanover County School System since 2008. I'm here because I saw a news article on a proposed dress code policy change, and you had requested um, input. <laughs> so. Um, my son started his first year at Ashley High School last year, and up until that point, I had been very satisfied with the school system um, from elementary on. I started seeing things last year that really concerned me um, pertaining to school safety. I felt like there was just a really a lack of it, um, and I did communicate with someone from the Board of Education last year as well as his principal, but. Uh, my main reason for speaking tonight is on the dress code proposal. I noticed last year that it just seemed like it was very inappropriate dress, and this was a carpool. Um, the garments to me were extremely short, very revealing, and many mornings I would say to my son, why are people, why are students, students dressing this way? Aren't they gonna be dress coded? And he kept saying, no, mom, we don't have a dress code. And then he say, well, I mean, I guess we have a dress code, but like nobody sends them home and nobody really cares. And I was like, nobody cares. I questioned um, 
I spoke with one of my customers who was a teacher at Ashley High School as well as one of the office staff at Ashley High School and they both confirmed that yes, we were no, we were no longer dress coding students because, you know, lawsuits and, you know, it was just too much trouble and, and you know, and I was mortified. And so when I read the new proposal on the dress code, um, I do believe students should be comfortable at school. I don't believe that the current dress code that we have is unreasonable. Um, there's a huge problem with the message we're sending students when we don't have expectations of dress for them to follow, as well as other expectations, but pertaining to dress tonight. If we want our schools to promote a healthy and effective learning environment, we need to have reasonable dress codes and they should be enforced. And I hope that you have a lot more responses than just me <laughs> concerning this matter. It's very concerning to me. And I, to the point between safety and dress codes at school, I just sometimes wonder why am I sending my kids to public school anymore and I don't want to feel that way. Thank you. Scott Burrell. I had a really good speech prepared for y'all, but uh, Pond Valley kind of took that <laughs> over. Um, but I'd, I'd like to reiterate what they said. Um, we're, I'm in support of Alderman School. I'm not here for my children, I'm here for all of the children for all, Alderman Elementary School. If you're here for Alderman, if you'll, well, they're already there. <laughs> but if you'll stand in the middle of the room and let us see you. Um, a couple years ago, we were kind of a, a school of, don't send your kid there, send them to private school. And Miss Taylor came in. You as a board put Miss Taylor at our school. And she, with her compassion, her unique desires to teach every kid, every kid there knows how much they're loved and how much they can, can succeed. She's partnered with First Baptist Church of Wilmington. She's partnered with communities, um, people in the community to bring them in. And every child gets read to. That's pretty astounding to me. She couldn't have come at a better time because it was one of the lowest testing schools in the entire county. And now we're actually thriving. We're a, we're a school that we can actually be proud of at this point. And I am proud of Alderman. I'm a, a student of the New Hanover County School System. I grew up here. Um, it, it, a lot like the, the Pine Valley people talked about, I went through that whole system. Uh, the school board provided six guiding principles for this redistricting process. Uh, balance the school facility utilization, accounts for future growth, close proximity to the schools, to establish a clear feeder pattern, pattern minimize impact on students, and especially diversity. With the current proposed maps that we have in front of us, four of those six are not being followed. Future growth, the maps do not account for future growth in the Live Oak and the Glenmead subdivisions. A lot of the Glenmead and Live Oak children who in past have attended private schools are now proud to be able to call Alderman their home school. They will go to Alderman. Close proximity, there's a house that is literally within 200 yards of Alderman Elementary that will not go to Alderman. That's sad to me. Minimize impact, only 34 of the 257 kids will remain at Alderman. That's an 87% of the Alderman kids will move out of the district out of their Alderman district and go to a different school if this proposed map is in place. Diversity, Alderman thrives on its natural diversity. We don't have to bake it. Houston, Moore, Glen Mead, Lincoln Forest, and Live Oak all make up this big neighborhood together. Um, this helps to account for a 45% black and a 40% white, 13% Hispanic diversity. With the new proposed maps, Alderman would drop its black diversity to 21%. Consultants groups don't know about our schools. They don't know about our kids. They don't know about our children. They admittedly simply rely on numbers. Redistricting is a daunting task, and I'm confident that the school board will pass not just the numbers and not just see these kids as numbers, but see them as actual kids. Thank you.
those of you that are here about redistricting, I do want to let you know that um, we decided to move up that committee report to right after the call to the audience. So if you all, all want to stick around, we will be talking about that after this is, is concluded, okay? Just to let you know. Uh, uh, next, for call to the audience, uh, Max Arthur uh, Sto Stoman. Good to see you again, Max. Hello. My name is Max Stoman. I'm 16 and I attend Isaac Bear Early College as a student. Towards the end of school last year, uh, I went to school wearing women's clothing. I did not intend to mock. I did not intend to flame. Uh, it was a simple matter of personal expression. And uh, believe it or not, uh, school operations went fine, right? So my friends were surprised and uh, people wanted to see, but. You know, things went on, went on as normal and uh, it was fine. But uh, despite this, I was asked up to the front office that morning by my staff and uh, they wanted to talk to me. They told me, uh, you know, after I made it clear that I wasn't mocking or inflaming or anything, but uh, despite that, they, they made it very clear that uh, they believed what I was doing to be uh, an academic distraction uh, and they asked me to change. Now, uh, you know, for me, this was really disappointing uh, because this was a really important thing for me. And uh, you know, I had to change, not because I was directly breaking something in the dress code, uh, but because of other people's uncomfort, um, despite me not really yeah, directly breaking it. Um, but despite this, right, I, I can't really be angry at the staff, because they really were uh, following the policies as they were written, or at least to their best interpretation. In fact, we've talked about it since then, and uh, it seems as though there's, there's really a, a bit of a, a lack of clarity uh, in the dress code regarding you know, discrimination and, and, and what, what would constitute there as that. So, you know, in particular, phraseology such as uh, academic distraction, it can sometimes be unclear wh when that applies. So I've talked to some members of the staff uh, and proposed some changes. Um, ultimately, I really just have to ask, you know, uh, is, it, is it fair uh, for me to be asked to change in, in that kind of situation, right? I mean, if I'm gonna be frank, you know, do you guys really think that there would have been the same reaction to, I don't know, maybe a female student wearing um, uh, to traditionally male clo clothing, I, I'm not sure. So ultimately, I hope I made it clear why it would be helpful to have ultimately a clear policy. I think that would help students understand. I think that would help uh, administrators administrate. I also wanted to add, since then, uh, I've started a petition regarding this change, and we've gotten over 150 signatures, which is uh, exciting. So yeah, that's, that's all. Thank you so much. Clyde Edgerton. All right, uh, that is all for call to the audience. So um, we will move up the committee report for redistricting next, if that's okay with the rest of the board. So I will turn it over to Mr. Wartman. Back in the spring, we hired a company to assist with um, our redistricting process, Cropper. Um, and the intent was to kind of get uh, an objective view of um, coming up with some maps. They had um, done some maps in some counties in North Carolina. I believe they're out of Columbus, Ohio. So they don't have any um, necessarily routes to Wilmington. So when the original maps were released in, I believe it was early July, what they did is they looked at capacity at New Hanover County Schools um, and filled up max capacity, I believe, to 103%, I think is what they looked at. Um, they didn't know New Hanover County. They didn't know where Market Street was, Oleander was. All they were um, interested in was maximizing the capacity and presenting the maps to the public and then using those maps, um, introducing those maps to the public and looking at the public feedback and developing maps moving forward. So that's what they did um, in, in July. We had our first session, I believe it was um, second week in July, a public information session. Some of, some of y'all were there. Um, listened to the presentations that they gave, um, put those maps online. Since then, we've received a lot of comments. And that was the intent of actually getting those maps out to the public in July so we could get those comments. I, I can tell you, and I think I speak for a majority of the board, we've heard from a lot of schools, a lot from Pine Valley, Holly Tree, Parsley, Alderman, 
um, about come some of the surprise of what those maps are. But again, that was the intent of putting those <coughs> maps so we could hear um, from the public and then develop those maps moving forward. I anticipate new maps. I don't believe middle school maps were ever, they were introduced originally, but um, there were some issues with capacity. Um, so we have not put the middle school maps out yet. I believe they should be out the end of this week is my understanding. Um, but updated elementary maps based on a lot of the feedback that we've received. Um, the committee uh, talked to them about what we would like to do. Obviously we have those, um, New Hanover, I think it's nhcsredistricting.com where the public's able to make some comments about the maps. But Cropper is now, will introduce um, a new set of maps uh, I believe Monday or Tuesday of next week. And I, I think, uh, and my hope is those maps, I haven't seen the maps, I don't think anyone's have seen the maps, takes into account the public, because that's ultimately why we got, we, we hired Cropper, um, so that there could be uh, more transparency and the public could be involved. So I would anticipate new elementary maps, I know Pine Valley aldermen are here, um, should be available Monday or Tuesday of next week. Correct, Wednesday on the, on the middle school maps, uh, first of next week on the uh, revised elementary maps. Mm -hmm. And again, I would encourage everyone to look at those. We have a redistricting meeting um, for the committee on August 20th. Your public is welcome to attend. There won't be any pub public comment at that time. Uh, I believe the public forum comment session is September 17th. Don't quote me on that date. It's somewhere right around there. Mr. Anderson shaking his head yes. September 17th. Um, come out to that, but remain involved in, in um, what you see with the maps because ultimately that's what we're trying to develop. Um, you know, what we see, what y'all see, and come up with some maps that, that represents our community. Can you, post, else can you post that date on the website for, for the open forum? I think it is. I think there's a link on there for redistricting that actually has specific dates. Redistricting link is on our front page uh, okay. Okay. In, in the prominent spot. Good. Thank you. And so if, you if you hit that link, it'll take you to the online comment section as well and, and the dates of the forum yes mm -hmm. and the meetings August 20th is the next committee meeting September 17th is the uh, at Snipes I think we moved it to Snipes um, for a public forum where Cropper is gonna have maps up all around people can walk around look at the maps and then have the um, opportunity to speak current comments I think online so far are in excess of 300 mm -hmm. Bill Nelson anything uh, I would just add that you know, Call to the audience is uh, sometimes difficult for, for the audience and for us in, in terms of uh, making sure that you know we hear you. Um, it's an interesting dynamic, but I, I want to thank everybody uh, from Alderman from Pine Valley who came to speak tonight. I want to thank people who have emailed me, who have called me. We're not just checking a box. This is really important to us. It's important to you. These are your kids, uh, and, and we hear that. We really appreciate it. So. Uh, this is a long process. Please stay involved, as uh, Member Wartman said. And uh, thank you very much for your comments thus far. Bill? Nothing? Can't okay. believe anybody from home appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, item number six, administrative personnel, administrative recommendations, appendix A, Dr. Markley. All right, we have a number of these tonight, which is typical for the August board meeting, uh, since school will be in session here in a couple of weeks. We will start first with the position of Deputy Superintendent, and it is my pleasure to recommend Dr. LaShawn Smith to be the Deputy Superintendent. She will retain her duties with instruction, but pick up the uh, added responsibility of being the Deputy Superintendent. She, Previously, she served as the Executive Director for Instructional Services, a Priority Schools Coach, Principal at Sunset Park, Principal at Murray Middle, and Assistant Principal at Williston. She's also taught Special Ed at Leland, and her contract will be in effect until June 30th, 2020. She has a Doctorate in Educational Leadership from UNCW. My pleasure to make that recommendation. I would like to have the honor to nominate Dr. Sharon <coughs> Smith. Is there a second? Second. Second, all right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. Congratulations. <laughs>
you've got some people here with you. <laughs> yeah, this is the first board meeting I've seen chair yet. <laughs> Second recommendation is for Assistant Superintendent for Student Support Services. It is my pleasure to recommend Julie Askew, who currently serves as the Executive Director for Special Education with the Hanover County Schools, previously served as the Director for Exceptional Children in Student Support, Project Director for Safe and Health Schools at Heidi Trask, Coordinator for Safe Schools and Principal Intern with Pender, and a Special Ed Teacher previously with us in New Hanover. She has a, both a Bachelor's and Master's from UNCW. And I have the same honor, <laughs> since I'm the oldest and <laughs> longest serving board member, I would like to nominate Dr. Uh, Ms. Julie Askew as our new Assistant Superintendent for Student Support Services. Is there a second? second? All right, is there a second? Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, Julie, I saw somebody sneak you a cup of coffee earlier. <laughs> who don't know we had another school kick in today at Isaac Bear and that Mr. Ron Valines who was the principal at Williston uh, welcomed his group of students today so it's my pleasure tonight to recommend his replacement Mr. Askia Kirby <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kirby previously, currently is actually with us as the NC Star Specialist. We stole him from Brunswick County, where he was the principal at Leland Middle School, prior to that at Supply Elementary uh, and Cape Fear Elementary. He also served as an AP at Topsail in North Brunswick. And he has a bachelor's in middle degree education in social studies from University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Mr. Eskia Kirby. I'd love to uh, <laughs> nominate this guy. He's been on my radar for a long time. Is there a second? So, uh, yes, I recommend him highly. Thank you. Okay. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. Congratulations. <laughs> you. Mr. Kirby, you got some folks with you tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> Our next recommendation is for an assistant principal at Castle Hain Elementary School, and that is Ms. Ashley Godlett. Uh, currently serves as an AP at the Wiley Magnet School in Winston-Salem. Previously, she served as a curriculum coordinator at Wiley Magnet School and a science teacher at several schools. She has a bachelor's degree from Central Washington, a master's in art from Winston-Salem State, and a licensure in educational leadership from University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Ms. Ashley Godlett.
<laughs> and I'll move to uh, approve the recommendation. All right. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. Aye. Ms. Gardlett. Who's that young lady you got with you? Next recommendation is from the assistant principal at Trask Middle School, Ms. Loretta Kimball, who served as an administrative intern, the math and science teacher in Cumberland County. Previously was a national presenter for the Institute of Education Development, median and a mathematics teacher at FTCC in Fayetteville. She has an administrative contract till June 2021, a bachelor's in science degree and mathematics from Campbell and a master's in school administration from Fayetteville State University. Go Broncos. <laughs> Move to approve recommendation. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. Miss <laughs> Kimball. Our next recommendation is from the assistant principal at Ashley High School, and that is Ms. Amanda Barber, who served as a principal intern at DC Virgo in Riceboro Elementary. She is also a principal fellow, previously served as a special education teacher with us here in the Hanover County. She has a BS degree in special education from ECU and a master's degree from UNCW. Move to approve. Second. All right. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. All right. <laughs> Ms. Barber, the floor is yours. Our next recommendation is Mr. Justin Fraschetti as an assistant principal at Hoggard High School. He served as an intern at DC Virgo and Bradley Creek Elementary, is also a North Carolina principal fellow, previously served as a social studies teacher with the Lyceum Academy at New Hanover High School. He received his Bachelor of Arts in History and a master's degree in school administration, both from UNCW. Is there a motion? Sure, move to approve recommendation for Mr. Fraschetti. Second. Sorry. Who had the second? Bill's man. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Rivenbark, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. <laughs> I introduce Mr. Fischetti. Our next recommendation is for the assistant principal at Isaac Bear Early College, Miss Elizabeth Jones. She currently serves as an instructional coach for Brunswick County Schools. Previously served as a science teacher at Brunswick Early College and at Roland Grice. She has a bachelor's degree in biology and environmental sciences from SUNY at Syracuse University and a master's in school administration from UNCW. Move to approve. Second. Yay, Ms. Jones. 
<laughs> All those things. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Time for the fish <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. It's always good when we can get one to come back across the river. <laughs> Ms. Jones? Next recommendation is for Title IX director, and I uh, my pleasure to recommend Jarrell Lewis. Currently serves as the Title IX coordinator to Dickerson University in Dickerson, North, Car North Dakota. Dickinson. Dickinson, excuse me. Previously provided legal services to the Concilio LLC, higher counsel for LLC, the N uh, NCCU School of Law, Juvenile Law Clinic, and the Durham County Public School Truancy Court Judge in Durham. Received a bachelor's in science degree in criminal justice from North Carolina A&T and a Juris Doctorate degree from NC Central in Durham. Previously also was one of our former students, a New Hanover High School graduate through our AVID program at that time. Uh, and he's a member of the North Carolina State Bar and has received certifications in, as a Title IX coordinator and investigator as well as 504 ADA coordinator and investigator. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah. Am I allowed to make this motion? <laughs> I will make this motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Um, we, we, I think there was a fairly large group that, that inter, uh, interviewed and um, kind of pared down the applicants and we're, we're very excited to have uh, this, this gentleman uh, join uh, our system. I think he's going to be a wonderful addition. So any other discussion? I would just like to thank the Title IX Committee for all its work and uh, thanks to my fellow board members and especially to you, Madam Chair, for, for your leadership uh, with all this. This is a really exciting uh, hire for the school system. He is in North Dakota tonight and could not be here. Uh, I'm assuming I've got. He's beating the snow. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> I also understand that his fiance is an English teacher. Uh, a te was a w teacher in Wake County? And his fiance is a oh, yes. teacher? Yes. So we'll be looking forward to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Lewis, thank you for coming tonight. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? It is approved. The last recommendation tonight is for the Director of Special Education and Related Services. Couldn't get this one until we had the other one, so. Uh, <laughs> it is my pleasure to recommend Patricia Williams, who serves as an Assistant Director now with Special Education here in the Hanover County. Previously served as a liaison uh, in the Division of Special Education at Anderson and at Wrightsboro. She has a BA, B, uh, bachelor's degree in special ed and a master's in special education from UNCW. It's my pleasure to recommend Patricia Williams. Patricia Williams for the position, special education. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is approved. Right. Ms. Williams? <laughs> 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 right. Super excited and extremely honored. Love what I do. 
We have been asked to take a five-minute break, so we will do that. Thank you. Thank you.